Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, we're going to do an in depth deconstruction of the reclaiming lost territory exercises. This is a, a, a set that I developed over the last, say, 30, 35 years that um, has gone through various uh, iterations. And it's largely designed to restore your mobility in your joints and to while at the same time create good habits for applying Taiji Chuan principles and particularly those that correlate to what I call the, 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 three, the three pillars of body, mind, spirit integration. So getting it so that you're you have those three pillars established, your central equilibrium, your energetic coherence, and you've unkinked the hose. That is, you've released the tension that's in, in the major points of blockage that prevent the chi from flowing. And uh, so we got to keep returning to that as, a, uh, as our reference point, because the three pillars set you up in a, in a way that you're structure is aligned so that these movements will do you the most good. And so a lot of the exercises are really to, to get you comfortable doing something, holding your body in a way that maybe you, you're, you're not yet. And you get a chance to, in a very low impact way, just work these things and, and get to feel the energy that gets created by, by doing this. And so, uh, I originally developed this because I was having a lot of trouble with particularly my shoulders. This is going way back decades ago. And, you know, it's still something that I've managed to, to put a lot of strain on shoulders, you know, throughout that time. And so it's a constant process of, of restoring health to the various joints. And in my case, you know, the shoulders are our primary, uh, primary part of that. So, you know, the, uh, so getting your alignment correct is a major part of being able to issue power, you know, from your arms. And if your, your shoulders are aligned improperly, then whenever you go to use any kind of, of, of force, you will have a, um, a negative reaction within the body. So you want to get the body aligned and your and it has a, a healing quality for uh, for all the joints and, and uh, uh, particularly in, in the shoulder joints. So uh, why don't you stand up and we'll uh, we'll do this. Okay, so first we're going to start by establishing the three pillars. You want to get that so that is you, you want to get it so it becomes second nature to you. But you feel the you know weight over the balls of your feet. You unlock the knees so that your weight is spread throughout the whole foot, but it's really centered around the ball. On the big toe line on the inside of the foot. Knees are unlocked. So what that means is you're not, it's not a deep knee bend. It's, this is locked, this is unlocked, locked, unlocked. And all it is is just, you're, you're allowing your knees to soften a bit while holding that position over the balls of your feet. And the other thing too is, is when you can do that and, and still lean backward and you don't wanna do that. You wanna have your center of gravity over the balls of your feet, so your your torso is vertical. So you can drop a plumb bob down from your shoulder, and then you'll it'll land there in the front part of your foot. So you have that that feeling there, and it's really important to have the central equilibrium to start because this aligns the 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 spine and uh, the structure of the body in a way that permits the energy to flow freely and to be, be able to use your movements in the most efficient way possible. 
So you want to reach with the crown of your head and this lengthens the neck. You want to tuck in the chin and open up the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Relax your lower back and drop your sacrum. So we're creating this, this pillar that is vertical. So if you'll notice my, my body is, there's a, a verticality to it, right? If I'm, my weight is on my heels, there's a tendency to do this, which is gonna throw all kinds of things off, including the shoulders. If I'm leaning backward, there's a tendency to, to pitch the shoulders forward and to cave into chest, and you get uh, all kinds of issues with that. So we wanna open up the chest, open up the shoulders, reach with the crown of the head, and really just feel into that, that structure. And if you get this right, you're gonna feel that sense of fullness, particularly in your hands. You're gonna notice some tingling, pulsing, sense of fullness. So point with your index fingers and create that, that energetic coherence. So you're connecting all the dots in your connective tissue system. Allowing the energy to, to move into a, a higher state of, of organization. Relax your shoulders and reach out a little bit with your elbows so your arms are slightly rounded. And this unlocks the shoulder joint. I want to kind of feel as though a thread were pulling from the clavicular notch, lifting up and opening up your chest and shoulders as you do. You're not forcing them back. You're just, ah, you're just allowing them to open by getting more vertical. The less you hunch over, the more freedom of movement you have in your, in your shoulders and your arms. And the less physical effort you have to apply in order to make it, uh, in order to create a, a positive effect. And spiral down. So when I say spiraling down, you're gonna feel the ball of your, say in this case, the left side of your, the left foot, you set the knee and you release down and you're allowing your body to follow gravity and go down. But notice, when I do that, I'm not pushing my butt out to the side at all. I'm uh, releasing down. This is gonna be really important with these exercises we do in a moment, because we wanna get it so that we're setting the knee. That means, when I say set the knee, that means the knee does not move. So as my body moves, my knee stays exactly where it is. It's not, it's not moving laterally, it's not moving forward or back, it's not bending, it's just set, it's, it's, it's locked in. And this gives me a very strong foundation in which to release all the tension in the upper body. So the first pillar is that central equilibrium. The second one, energetic coherence, which we activate by pointing and reaching with the index fingers. And then we unkink the hose and we've done that with the jade pillow gate by tucking in the chin, reaching with the crown of the head. We've opened the, the shoulder gates by reaching out slightly with the elbows. And we allowing the quad to get very relaxed, the hip joints and, and opening up the big chi that comes through the hip joints. So this is our three pillars. And you want to just feel into that and you're engaging the moment with your posture. It's a dynamic posture. There's a tendency, we have a, all have a tendency to kind of lean back and, and kind of coast. And when we do that, it's not a dynamic posture. It's a, it's a passive kind of uh, posture. We want to get it so that there's, it's like you're standing on a diving board and you got to feel the weight of the balls of your feet and you're ready to, uh, to uh, jackknife into the pool. So 
So the first um, exercise is a is an exercise to release the qua. And first, I'm going to show you what it's not. And and there is a very common exercise that all of us have done, and it goes something like this: you go you go like this, and you're basically twisting your body and and allowing your arms to to flow with that and you're rocking back and forth between your legs and this is a perfectly fine exercise and and there's nothing wrong with this it what it does is it it basically loosens up your spine and just kind of a, a gentle kind of rocking movement which is fine what we're doing is not that that's a perfectly fine exercise and it's not wrong and and do it all you want but I don't teach it because I don't want people to get confused with this exercise we are going to do, which is specifically designed to allow you to feel what I call ball knee qua. That is, you feel the ball of the foot, you set the knee, and then you release the qua. And you learn to turn. So after you release the qua, you're turning and without moving the knee. So the knee stays set. And this is really crucial. And people, always, a lot of times they'll do this exercise and they're kind of, they're kind of, they're bouncing the knee back and forth and, and they're moving their body all over the place. And uh, so you want to, you want to really get it so that uh, the knee is set. And you can put a chair there and use that until you don't need it anymore. But the idea here is, unlike that first exercise I showed you, we are not twisting the body. So this thing, we're not doing that. What we're doing, in fact, you can actually practice it by, you want to move your hips and your shoulders at the same time. So that the torso is a single unit and you turn, so you feel the ball, you set the knee, you spiral down in this case into to the right, I'm loading up that. Notice that my butt hasn't gone sideways at all. I'm not doing this. I'm not rocking into that right leg. I am spiraling down. So that means I'm allowing gravity to allow my body to sink as I release here at the, at the hip joint. I'm releasing the muscular tension at the hip joint. And then what do I do? I'm going to turn to the left. Okay. And notice what I'm not doing is I'm not spiraling down and then bobbing up and then spiraling down again and bobbing up and I'm not doing that. I, what I'm doing is spiraling down and then turning without coming up. And so the all the release is happening here at the hip joint. You're not pushing your knee forward. So if I'm doing it in profile, what I'm not doing is this. I'm not pushing the knee out and then coming up and then pushing the knee out and coming up. I am knee is set and I am releasing and turning like this, and the knee stays right where it is. So what that does is it allows you to focus on the tension, the chronic muscular tension that locks up your hip joint and prevents you from getting your full range of motion in the hips and also prevents you from um, that prevents the chi from flowing freely through the through the hip area. So then we go to our back leg, our keep the, the right foot forward and pick up the front heel. All the weights in the in the left leg now. So you feel the ball, you set the knee, and then you spiral down and turn. Okay, and once you get locked in so that you can feel your hips and shoulders moving as a unit. You can let your arms just hang and let them flow. But the key here is you're feeling the ball of the foot each movement. You're not rocking back and forth into the heel. You're not rocking to the outside of the foot. And you're not pushing your butt out to the side because that's going to take you out of the out of the ball of the foot. So, but to start off, you want to just really get get comfortable. And anytime you 
need to reset. And here's actually a really good thing to do is push away from the earth. So you're, you're actually claiming the tendency that we have to, uh, to, to do that as a natural thing. And then, ah, then you release down. And you can return to that, push away and spiral down. You can do that over and over again until you have really mastered the sung kwa. The sung means to sink into the intrinsic structure of the body mind, of the connective tissue. Okay, now you put your left foot forward and feel the ball. You set the knee, pick up your rear heel. Okay, you really want to feel your central equilibrium, your energetic coherence. And this is helping you with the sung kwa. So you're getting, you push away and then spiral down and turn and turn. And so the, your primary focus on this is establishing that ball knee qua connection. Feel your ball, feel the, set the knee and your, you, all the action is happening here at the, at the hip joint. And what that does is it allows you to let go of tension in your upper body. It allows you to be able to execute your motions with your torso, with your arms, with a minimum of tension because you can trust your structure. Now we go to the back foot, your right foot, pick up your left heel. So your, your weight is in the right foot. You feel the ball of the foot, you set the knee and push away and then uh, spiral down and turn. And you're not bobbing up and down as you, as you turn, you're nice and easy. Shoulders and hips moving as a unit. The whole torso moves as a unit. And doing this, in this whole process, your butt should be very, very relaxed. You do not, should not feel any tension at all in your buttocks. Okay. Good. So that's the, uh, that's the qua exercise. And it's really... It's a good one to do every day and more than once until you, until you get it so that you just, you really know this one. Um, before we go forward, any questions on this? Can, uh, can you give me a uh, full screen there? So let's see if anybody has. Looks like Lynn. Yeah. What do you got there, Lynn? I just want to clarify. So I'm spiraling once and then I'm staying there and turning in both directions. Correct. Okay. Okay. I was trying to spiral and spiral and spiral and it was making me dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. But what I is a distinction we, we've talked about in another, another one of these, but the idea here is what the spiraling down is it releases the qua, right. but that right. is, it, it's like putting in the clutch on a, on, a, on a, a standard transmission. So you're, you're disengaging that you're, ah, you're settling down. It's a very yin kind of thing. The turn is yang. That is, it is, it's an expression of energy. So this, once I spiral down, I, that's yin, and then I can turn and I'm able to generate power with each each of these movements because the uh, I've established that 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 connection so it's uh, there's a uh, it permits by first establishing that that yin uh, release it gives a fluidity to the uh, to the joint which you can't get if you just try to turn you just try to turn without putting the clutch in. It's like shifting gears without putting the clutch in. So anyway, that's uh, that's that. Cool. Anybody else? 
You see anybody? Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so, uh, all right, going on, moving on. Next one. This is great for shoulders. And it's also great for the qua. And the uh, name I heard for it is uh, Song Gong. And it's, it's really just a, 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 a song practice. So we're gonna take that same idea with the, with the qua. And this time you bring your arms up and notice that my wrists are bent. So my fingers are just kind of hanging and I'm reaching with the wrists. That is, if I just, if I'm coming up like this, so that my, my hand is coming up like that, right? I'm reaching with the wrists as if, as if there's a, uh, like a marionette or something like that's pulling up there. And, that, and just, to, uh, just to understand that what, what's going on, if you, if you bring your hand, if you extend your fingers and you bring your arm up, Notice the shoulder tension that that activates by doing it that way, by having the fingers reaching out. Now do it, and this time reach with the wrist first, and notice how effortlessly that goes up, and then you bring the fingers out as a last flourish. But so, and then coming down, you reach with the elbow and the wrist, and then the fingers come down. So it becomes a very fluid kind of motion, okay? And if you can do this by reaching with the wrist first, you can let go of 90% of your shoulder tension by, by doing it that way. Whereas if you go, if you're trying to go up with the fingers extended, it's going to activate muscles in your shoulders that you not only do not need, but which are counterproductive to to your, to your motion. So here we go. So the idea here is you, ah, uh, you bring the wrists up. Notice that my elbows are dropped, okay? And what you don't want to do is this. You don't want to turn your arms out like this. And a lot of people will do this. They'll, they'll have the arm out like that and it creates a lot of tension in the shoulders and it, it's, it's the wrong angle. You're going to actually create do, you're going to create difficulty for yourself. And uh, uh, so the idea is it's very relaxed and you don't have to come up very far. In fact, if your, your shoulders are such that that's as far as you want to go, that's okay. That's okay. You know, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get the, uh, you get some, you'll, you'll start to create more uh, movement, more range of motion, the more you do this. So you can think of it as like, we're kind of flapping our wings. We're like, we're like kind of coming up like that, right? So the, the and what we're gonna do is we're gonna coordinate that with our, we're going to do this as our neutral posture and then uh, come down, reach down with the elbows, the wrists and turn. And one hand comes in front, the other one goes behind. And then you go up and turn. So we're again, we're setting the knee, we're spiraling down single weighted. So as I, I go pick one side or the other and I sink into that claw and I do it with, with no, without pushing my knee out at all. So we're creating this kind of nice, easy kind of movement. And the key here is letting go of shoulder tension, learning to reach with the wrist and be able to have that as a natural kind of, kind of movement so that you can create this very relaxed, fluid motion with your arms. So we're doing two things, two types of sung here. We're getting sung kwa and that we're spiraling down and turning. And we're getting 
soon in the shoulder joints as well. Your arms are becoming very soon. And by releasing the shoulder tension, we allow the chi to flow, and we also remove the um, impediment that comes from too much muscular tension in the shoulders. And notice how my body is, even though I'm shifting my weight like this, my body is, is not moving side to side. It's just, it's just rotating around this central axis. So what I'm not doing is I'm not doing this, right? I'm not doing like that. I, and it does not be a very big movement either. You're, you want to keep your central pillar so that you're rotating and you're getting used to the idea of this compact movement with your hip joints. So you're able to get that. Okay, any questions on that? Good, 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 good. Okay, good. Okay, a variation on that, you know, you can, you can sink down to the left and turn to the left. You can sink down to the right and turn to the left. You can stay in one leg. You can stay in the right leg and just do, do this back and forth. Good, you can stay in the left leg and do this back and forth. So you get, to, you get a chance to play with that. And all those are good for developing a, uh, a qua awareness, an awareness of your hip joint and using that as your, as a primary pivot point for the energies in your body. And it makes sense because the, the qua is where the thigh meets the torso, right? Right here at the inguinal crease. So it getting that, if you have that as your pivot point, you have your foundation, which is in your legs, you know, and you have the, the uh, torso, which is uh, doing a lot of the work for you. And we're having, we're having an awareness of how to control the movement in the, in the qua and uh, be able to use that dependably. Okay, so. Next one, we're going to open the jade pillow gate. So we talked about that before. We did that as, as our setup. And this is an exercise to, to return awareness to the way you move your head. That is pivoting from the, uh, right here at the base of the skull. I like to make it at the point here, right where the, uh, the atlas is, the topmost vertebra, right at the base of the skull. So have that as the pivot point. So the, uh, what happens, what this is trying to correct is a tendency that you'll notice in the majority of humans that I've observed is a tendency to pivot, not from the atlas, but from way down here, lower in the neck, you know, around C6, C7. And so people have a tendency to do this and pivot from there, which creates a lot of shoulder and neck tension, as well as imbalance in, in a whole lot of things and can give you headaches and all kinds of things. So what we're doing is we are creating awareness by, so just start by put your finger right on that, that um, pivot point there on, the, on your topmost vertebra, that hollow right under the base of the skull. And you're gonna use that as your point, your hinge, right? So you lift your chin and then you tuck your chin in and just up and down like that. So you get that until you really have that sense of where you're pivoting from. And then you go up and down reaching. And in doing that, you're going to find you're going to lengthening the neck muscles as you do that. Because they tend to get stuck by misalignment and creates a lot of neck problems. So as you do this, you're lengthening the, the, the muscles as well as the connective tissue and opening up the neck and allows you to, 
to be able to stand a little bit taller since you're since you're not jutting the chin out as much, you know, and kind of doing that kind of thing. It's more of a, uh, you're reaching, as I said before, with the crown of the head. And by opening up the jade pillow gate, pillow gate by removing the muscular tension that prevents that from occurring, then it allows you to reclaim the vitality that is, uh, is uh, you know, the Jing Chen, which is uh, the spirit of vitality because that comes with opening up the jade pillow gate. And so we, we get that. The next thing we do is um, uh, we're going to, uh, ah, we're going to reach out with, in this case, the right hand and move your head, reach out with your head to the left. So what we're doing here is we're lengthening the neck and shoulder muscles all the way down to your fingers. And you can move your head around and turn it and move your arm around and see where it does you the most good. So you're, you're trying to reclaim lost territory there by extending an opening and something which tends to get really shortened as you get older. So creating that. And then you go to the other side, reach out and reach the opposite direction with your head. And yeah. you'll find different positions give you different feedback from your body. Good. Now roll the head. Here we're, we're exploring the range of motion in the neck and you're gently kind of moving around in circles and just seeing where it hangs up for you. And you don't force anything, you're just gently exploring the range of motion and nibbling at the edges of muscular tension. and go the opposite direction. And you may hear some popcorn in there as you do this. And that's okay. Just don't force anything. Oh, you're lubricating the vertebrae by moving that around. Uh, next is to uh, the call it turkey head. And basically the idea is you're pushing your face forward and pulling it back. You're, you're standing in, in central equilibrium and just you're pivoting from the shade pillow gate, pushing your face forward and coming back. <laughs> Watch a wild turkey sometime and see how they kind of do that. That's the inspiration for that. Um, okay, so we got. Uh, now we're going to um, we're going to release the muscles that hold the uh, the spine in place and letting go of a lot of the tension that's around the spine by getting more and more in tune with the vertebrae as you uh, and uh, you're focusing on each vertebra as you go down and allowing the muscles that are supporting it to release. And so it's in a very speeded up way. What it looks like is this. I'll be standing like this, knees are bent, and I'm going to begin. And first thing, I'm going to start with my neck or cervical vertebrae. 
and just start to roll that down and get down and then I get to my thoracic vertebrae, my upper back, and then I do that. Notice how everything is stacked up as I'm going down and then I get down to the lumbar area and then I go down there and then I straighten my knees and sink even more. So I will talk you through this, but this is the, uh, uh, this is a great exercise for creating spine awareness. Really crucial for, for anybody that's got, for all of us vertebrates, it's a really swell idea to, to treat your spine like a good buddy. You want to want to really treat it nice. And this is a way of doing it. It's like letting go some of the, the muscular tension, the chronic stuff that it creates a, a lot of pain and but also inhibits your motion and inhibits your spinal flexibility. Your ability to, to have a flexible spine is a really uh, important thing if you want to maintain your health uh, as you get older. So to begin, knees are unlocked and not just unlocked. We're going to go really bent this time. So you're really nice and soft and you reach up with the crown of the head and we're going to just tuck in the chin and start to open up right there at that atlas. We're going to start with the cervical vertebrae. There's seven of those. And you breathe and uh, release and you let go of the tension as you're going down. In each breath, you let something go. You don't have to do it one breath per vertebra, but you can. And since our time is limited, we're going to not do that. So we're going to go right now to the thoracic vertebrae. And there are 12 of those. We're going to start to release the upper back. Still keeping the, the head down, using the weight of the head to help with this process. We're unfolding as we go. Now we're going to the lumbar vertebrae, and that's those are the five big ones at the at the bottom. Release your buttocks as you go down. Now straighten your knees and without forcing anything, you just allow the weight of your body to sink. And as you inhale, bring your torso up a little bit. And as you exhale, release down a little lower. You don't need to force anything, just allow it to allow your arms to hang. There's plenty of Wait there to do it. You inhale and uh, exhale. Allow that to drop. Feel the tissues lengthening as you let go of the muscular tension.
and then bend your knees, sit down and start. We're gonna reverse the process. We're gonna to start to come up now. You're just gonna stack up your lumbar vertebrae. One at a time. Now the thoracic vertebrae. Now your cervical vertebrae. And then pause and just feel into your body. And feel the feel the chi, feel the energy, feel. Feel the circulation throughout your body. Really remember to get into a central equilibrium. And feel the power that is circulating throughout the whole system. Okay, now we're going to we're going to arch the back and open. So it looks like this. Your, your hands come up the center line and arch your back and reach out with your arms and just allow the weight of your arms to open your shoulders and open your chest. And come up. And here, now we're going to round the back. So we talked about before that spinal flexion and extension. We want to round the back. And then inhale and arch the back. And exhale, round the back. And inhale, arch the back, opening the shoulders opening the chest. Yeah. So notice what's happening is that as I'm coming down, I just curl in like this and then open. Uh, and coming in. So there's this contraction into a ball and then a uh, big expansion, very yin and very yang as we open. And so we're creating that, that, that spine that Oh, is very, very flexible and the feels um, supported and the muscles are, they're getting uh, circulation, they're getting exercise, they're, you're, you're greasing the skids of your, of your vertebrae, you're creating space in your vertebrae, between your vertebrae and you're gonna get taller as you do this. So it's, um, uh, this is something that, you know, people are reporting to me all the time, like how they're actually measuring taller as they, as they get older, which is pretty cool. So um, I know it certainly has happened with me. So the, we've got that. So the next thing is we're doing what's called knocking on the door. And the idea here is that you're going to bring your arm back like this as if you're wrapping on a, something, a wall behind you or something like that. So you're pivoting at the, at the elbow and that opens up the shoulder joint. And the other arm goes back like this. 
So together they they look like this, right? And then you go and you switch it around. And you go this way. And you're opening shoulders, you're opening chest, you're creating some space there. This is a motion that very few of us will do in the course of our day, where we get open up like this. So to actually do this, it kind of, it helps to balance the ledger a little bit in terms of your motion, because most of the stuff we're doing is, is forward reaching and to actually ah, expand it like that creates space there. And it allows you to reset your relationship to your shoulder joints and your chest. And the more open your chest is, the easier it is to breathe, the more the, uh, the better the circulation with the meridians in your chest, your heart and your lungs. And uh, so it's all good. Um, Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so what do we got? We got, I think we can, uh, we got uh, at least one more. Um, after that, we're going to let them hang. And this is a, uh, what we do here is just so uh, you allow your arms to just very relax. You reach out slightly with the elbow and let the weight of the arms drop straight down. And what this does is it allows the connective tissue and the muscles to untangle itself just by releasing there. And as you relax and let go of that tension, you'll feel a, a dramatic increase in circulation to your fingers. And this is indicative of a whole body energetic connection. Okay, now we're going to do big circles. This is a great one for, for shoulders. Um, and the idea here is that I'm going to, as I inhale, I'm gonna arch my back, my reaching back of my elbows and arching the back and opening like, like that, right? So I'm going, ah, oh, like this and then rotate and as I go down, I'm gonna sink down like into a squat. I'm gonna go, my torso is going straight down and I sink down like this and the arms come up again and go like that, right? Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that one. So first we're going to, as you inhale, you reach up. So reaching up with those wrists again, right? Elbows, wrists opening, arching the back, oh, and exhale, round the back, sink down and drop your arms, reaching forward with your, your wrists and arch the back, and exhale, round the back, <sighs> squatting down. So we're opening the shoulder joints, opening the chest. We're getting a nice workout for the legs. We're getting very sung qua as we sink down. Oh, good, now let's go the other way. So your inhale, arch the back, hands come up and exhale, rotate your palms up, sink down, hands come down and up, reaching with the wrists, and exhale, reaching with the elbows, the wrists, and arch the back, and round the back, exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. And close. and go back to let them hang. Unwind your arms, unwind your shoulders. Feel the energy coursing through your body. Feel the 
enhanced circulation. So we're, it's not just increasing the circulation, it's, it's happening at a, at a micro level. We're doing a, a micro circulation. That is your enhancing the capacity of your blood to penetrate all those little hidden recesses in your in the cells. Okay, next one. Oh wait, let's, is there any questions on that one before we before we go forward? Let's, uh... Yes. Scott. Um, so when you're doing that one, um, I, are you just letting your arms, like, because when I'm doing that, my arms want to move. Not a lot, but they want to, you know, as they're kind of unwinding there. When you're talking about letting them hang. Yeah. yeah. If they want to move, let them move. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, you can even help them out a little bit. You can just kind of, just kind of move around a little bit and then that'll give them, it gives them permission to unwind. So that's that's a great, great comment there, Scott. Thank you. Cool. Anybody else? Any other questions on this? Uh, thoughts on it? Okay, good. Moving forward. Okay. Lost my screen. I lost my screen. There we are. Okay. So hands come up and you're reaching out. So again, we're reaching out with the wrists. The fingers are just sort of hanging out there, elbows are dropped. And you wanna open the chest, open the shoulders. So it's not out here, it's we're bringing the shoulder blades together and back. So we're, we're consciously opening up here and, but without tension. So it's, it's more of a, a releasing rather than a forcing. So, but you, you point out there with your index fingers and very gently, you're making circles with your fingertips. Very small circles. So here we are. So look at this. Notice that we're very small. You want to keep your central equilibrium, keep your three pillars in, and you're pointing and reaching with your fingers. And this, what we're doing is rehabilitating the rotator cuff as the uh, rotator cuff muscles as we're doing this, relaxing the shoulders and learning to, to be able to move and allow the energy to move through the shoulder rather than trying to initiate movement by the shoulder. And now pick up your, rotate your palms so they're not for still uh, shoulder blades are still together and back, your chest is still open and we're gonna go the opposite direction now. You can do these in sets of like 20 or 40 or something. You could, you could do it for a while. But notice my elbows are lower than my wrists. It's really key because some, and it's not like this. It's not like, you know, where the elbows are up high. It's, they're dropped, okay? And this enables me to create some fluid motion with my shoulders. And relax, um, his arms come down and let them hang. Feel the chi. There, you probably feel a lot, a lot of activity in your hands right now. Let's step in. Deep breath, inhale and exhale and disappear the chi, dissolve into the emptiness. Please have a seat. Rick. I think you semi answered it before, but when you're doing the big 
when you're doing the back and then the front, the back and the front, is there a, can we just make up the number of times we want to do it? Or is the set time a set number better than just doing it as long as we want? Uh, that, that's a good point. I generally, when I'm doing it with a group, I generally do six each way, six front, six back, but I've done as many as 10. You know, I'm doing it by myself. I'll probably do 10, you know, whenever I'm doing it, you know, with, with a group, you know, and if I'm doing, you know, uh, with people, it's, it's very challenging, or if I'm doing super slow, then I'll, maybe I'll do a few or fewer of them. So it's, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, so six is a good place to start and then you can, uh, you can ad adjust as needed. Thank you. Yeah. Scott. Uh, I think Lynn had something. I got a bunch of questions. <laughs> okay, Lynn. <laughs> um, okay, I was just, when you're doing the curling the back down, right? Yeah. Um, I always get to straight and then keep going. Cause I mean, it's like, I don't have any more vertebrae to actually let go. But, you know, I just, it feels good to keep letting further down. So basically I end up with my head, the top of my head down toward the ground. So, so you know, curl, let loose, let loose, let loose, let loose, let loose. You know, here, all of them are pretty much let loose. And I just, you know, go a little further. And I just wanted to know. Um, different than what, what I did, what I did other than the fact that I know it's different than what you did it, it is it, it's different in that I, I after I did it oh you don't think it is either? I don't think it is either. oh okay I I okay you seem to be straight like stopped it at oh the head being your body being horizontal so what it, I well what I try to do is this I try to go down like the here. Right. Then I straighten up and then go down. I straighten the legs and go down. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's okay to keep going. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely what we do. As one, one thing I, I, I know is what you were doing, you might not do this while you're doing the exercise, but the, uh, uh, I know your head was, you kept your head up and you definitely want to. Start and yeah. up and keep it, keep it going down. Yeah. Probably do. I was kind of trying to look at you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Good question. Scott, you had something? Um, so actually on that question, when you get to that point, I mean, my hands are on the ground, right? So I just kind of, I just kind of, you know, bend them up a little bit, right? I mean, or. That's fine. Yeah. Matter, right? Yeah. So your, your knees are straight and your 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 hands on the ground. Yeah, I'm pretty flexible, so I can get yeah. That's perfect. So uh, uh, yeah, you can you can you can fold your arms up. You can whatever it takes to do that. You know the key is to you know I like to just you know you come up a little bit and then uh, each time you exhale you drop a little bit more and uh, and whatever whatever your flexibility level is. So that that's great. And on the um... Knocking on the door. I never really thought about. I guess I never really thought about this, but you're you're actually kind of trying to bring your shoulder blades together as you're doing it, right? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought of that before. Um, yeah. Right. Anything uh, else? Yeah. The the one we just did, the last one. Um, so you're saying I'm not gonna hit you. Um, you're saying uh, not not. Initiating the movement with the shoulders, right? So what are you actually, you're sort of initiating the movement with the hands? I'm not. Ah, that, that, that's good. You're, you're, the, the emphasis I'm, I'm making here is it's a, it's actually a whole body co connection. So instead of just, it's like this, right? You're, you're using shoulder muscles to make that happen. It's actually extending all the way through the body. And so you're, you're reaching out, which lengthens the connective tissue system. So you should be able to feel this when you're reaching out like that, you should be able to feel it in your feet. You know, the, so there's that, 
that connection all the way through. So that requires releasing the tension there and just allow the, the connective tissue system, which unites the whole body, to do its thing. So it's, uh, it's tough to describe it in terms of what are you doing with the shoulder or not, but, but uh, that's what I'm trying to get at. So you're, you're, you're so uh, like when I do it, I am thinking, you know, I'm kind of thinking about my shoulder going around, but I'm not thinking of it as that creating the motion, right? In other words, that's, that's sort of how I'm thinking about it. It's uh, it's 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 a tough one to to describe because it's it's both and your shoulders doing and it's not doing so it's uh you know it the the key here is you want to release as much of the tension as you can so it just feels like as as though the movement is going through the shoulder rather than initiating at the shoulder i think that's that that the way i would describe it yeah, Sharon. Okay, so are you moving your scapula with it with this? Is uh, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, I guess there's 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 scapula movement there, which is very different than just coming out of the joint. When you right. make it with the scapula, is entirely different. Yeah, you know, that's a very good point there. I hadn't considered that, Sharon. Thank you. So yeah, you're so that, when I'm talking about that whole connection there, you know, you're using the you know the uh, subscapularis and the infraspinatus yeah. and you know, the teres major and the teres minor, and so all these things are are involved in that. You know, but it's not just happening here. You know, it's happening throughout the whole system. And all that, of course, is connected up to to er everything else. So it it becomes a, a whole a whole body kind of connection. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a good, really good point. Cool. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you all so much. It's been great. <laughs>